Hi, my name is Mona Simpson, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some tips, some small things that I guess I know from years of writing. I think really all we can give each other as writers, as friends, as teachers, are tips, because the most important part of all this, you kind of have to do yourself. I think the first tip I have, I would work to establish a daily writing practice. I would do that today as soon as possible. There's never a good time to find a way to do this. My students often say that how can they now that they have all these classes and they have finals or they have midterms. Or, but then people when they're out of school start a full-time job and realize how exhausting that is. If you want to write, you've got to write. We're writers because we write, not because we publish, not because we're read. We're writers foremost because we do this. We come back again and again and do this. The second tip is try as much as possible to do your work rather than spend a whole lot of time and energy judging your work and assessing your work and worrying about the quality of your work. Don't spend your life agonizing because you feel it's not good enough. One of my students, a student I particularly liked, on the second or third day of class asked me how he might best prepare to win the Nobel Prize. Then by the end of the year, I was writing recommendations for him to go to graduate school in physical therapy. And the good news is the one thing he did develop in that class was a regular daily writing habit. The third suggestion, let's see, what is my third suggestion? My third tip. Oh, what's my third tip? Um, oh, dear, 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 dear. This is what happens. This is what happens when you're not a good anchor person. Other people, most of us started this all because something struck us and we fell in love with books and with literature. The overriding message of almost all literature from the beginning of time has to do with only connect, love when you can. So I think as much as possible, find people who love what you love. Start a magazine, start a reading series, at the very least start a writing workshop or a book club. I think this is really, really important. It's also one of the pleasures, part of the real happiness of being a writer. So don't, don't miss that part. And the last thing is, I would recommend developing parallel practices. If you're a runner, you'll learn about endurance. If you garden, you'll learn about weeding. You'll learn about adjusting what you grow to the weather, and to the climate where you live. You might adjust what you write. You have to adjust what you write to who you are and what your gifts are and what you're good at. If you are raising a child, if you're nurturing a pet, if you're taking care of someone you love as they die, you'll learn how to give yourself entirely to something that matters. Meditating will teach you how to go deep and to return again and again and again. Activism and community work will teach you how to be patient. And now I'm gonna read some words which I came across for the first time when a, when a teacher read them, I think Tom Gunn, the poetry teacher in my freshman year of college, read this these words which are Anonymous. Many of you will know the poem. It, it, it actually was written, historians believe, because of the Middle English in the Middle Ages, although it was only discovered as a fragment in 1530, and it was published along with notes for a tune. It was a song. It, it, it was published, it was written as the lyrics to a song, and it was a poem first. So, Western wind, when wilt thou blow, the small rain down can rain. Christ, if my love were in my arms, and I in my bed again. Such a beautiful poem. There are so many things one could, one could use as a starting point from this poem. There are characters, there's the character of the narrator, there's the character of the person to whom the narrator is addressing these words. There's the, the drama of where this narrator is, why he's away from home, whether he'll return, all of that. One nice thing is we all live in a cultural commons, so those four lines have been used and used by, by composers, by, by writers. Virginia Woolf used them in the waves. Ernest Hemingway used them. Thomas Pynchon took the second line for the title of his first published story, The Small Rain. But the Talus scholars have an arrangement for a mass, and I'm just going to play you that for a moment, and you might get your notebook 
workout and see if it 